Did you know that China was planning a massive constellation of satellites in low Earth orbit? It goes by the name of Guowang or Xinwang and is a sort of Chinese equivalent to Starlink, basically a massive constellation which plans to revolutionize how satellite internet is provided around the world. So what is this constellation for? How does it compare to Starlink and when will it launch? Let's tell the full story. This video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. More on them later. Back in early 2015, SpaceX officially announced the Starlink project, a mega constellation of satellites in low Earth orbit, which would provide global satellite internet access around the world, regardless of location. While this was not the first time a broadband constellation was being proposed, SpaceX took the world by surprise with the scale of the constellation and the speed of execution, with an unprecedented number of satellites launched since 2018, including more than 1,700 satellites in 2022 alone, and that number is to compare with the total number of operational satellites the same year. Naturally, with the growing China-US rivalry, the Chinese have been observing very closely these new capabilities and mulling constellations of their own. The strategic and economic implications of Starlink were increasingly obvious, from the number of active subscribers, the development of their maritime and in-flight business, telecom backhauling, all the way to more strategic and military applications, like the provision of connectivity to Ukraine. The first shot was fired in China in November 2016, when the country's largest space conglomerate, Cask, announced Hongyan, which is a plan to build a constellation of over 300 satellites in low Earth orbit, covering satellite internet, but also more niche applications like mobile communications, AIS, ADS-B, space IoT, and GNSS enhancement. A new entity under CASC called the Dongfang Hong Satellite Mobile Communication Company was created in the city of Chongqing to head the project. And this was reported to receive 20 billion Chinese yuan of investment at the time. The company was supposed to deploy 60 satellites by 2022, the full constellation by 2025, and production lines for the satellites were commissioned in Tianjin, aiming at an initial output of 130 satellites per year. At least, that was the plan at the time. Almost at the same time, fellow Chinese aerospace conglomerate Kasich was pursuing similar projects. In August 2017, at the Chinese Commercial Aerospace Forum in Wuhan, it announced the Hongyun constellation of 156 satellites, with individual satellite capacities of 10 gigabits per second. Plans to build large constellation production sites were also laid out in Wuhan, with an objective of 240 satellites manufactured per year. So how did any of this go? At first, these plans seemed to materialize rather quickly. The construction of the manufacturing sites were kicked off immediately, and each constellation project launched into orbit a concept validation prototype in late 2018, the Hongyun-1 and the Hongyun-1 respectively of 40 and 247 kilograms. And in 2019, CASC expanded its Hongyun constellation plans from 156 satellites to 864 satellites. But after that, things seemed to slow down to a crawl, and the aggressive deployment timeline initially announced never took place. It seemed almost as if things had come to a standstill, but beneath the surface, what was actually happening was a major shift in the country's strategy. In 2020, rumors started to spread that China's broadband constellations would merge into one. In April of that year, China's top economic regulator, the NDRC, flagged the concept of satellite internet as critical infrastructure for the country, adding it to a list called Xinjijian, or New Infrastructure, composed of core technologies like 5G, AI, and IoT. And these first hints soon became tangible actions in September 2020, when two spectrum allocation filings were received from China by the International Telecommunications Union, or ITU, describing two similarly named constellations, the GWA-59 and the GW-2. GW in the name here refers to the Chinese expression Guowang, which means national network, and this became the de facto appellation for this constellation. And most important of all, the filings received by the ITU describe the constellation as composed of a total of 12,992 satellites. So what China seemed to be doing was merging the previous Hongyun and Hongyan projects into one super constellation, and the following year in April 2021, China made the big move establishing a new company called the China Satellite Network Group, also known as China Satnet for short, which would be the operator of this future satellite internet constellation. Now, a very important phenomenon was also taking place in parallel. 
In 2014, China had begun opening its space industry to the private sector, and many startups had formed in the wake of this change of policy. Companies that you've probably heard of on this channel, like Landspace, Galactic Energy, Minospace, CGSTL, and others. These companies had the ambition to cover literally every vertical of the space industry, except what was now increasingly looking like a purely state-led endeavor, the operation of a satellite internet constellation. This is why around 2020, many commercial companies like Laser Fleet, Galaxy Space, CompSat, and Space OK more or less dropped their constellation projects. You see, from Beijing's perspective, the critical nature of satellite internet justified the fact that this activity would need to be wholly state-owned. In a similar way, when you think of 4G and 5G on the ground, China's main telcos, China Telecom, China Mobile, and China Unicom, are all state-owned players, and there is no space for a private operator. The same would go for Chinese satellite internet. However, another trend was also clear. While the operations of the network would be close to commercial players, manufacturing the hardware, so namely the satellites and the terminals, would be more open. And this is why many commercial companies have moved their efforts to building massive small sat factories, among which you have the factories from Galaxy Space, CompSat, G Space, as well as state owned players like CAS Tianjin or K6 Space Engineering Development. The very structure of the operator of China's Guang constellation, China SatNet, reflected this philosophy. Rather than making China SatNet a subsidiary of China's main space conglomerate cask, which is probably what you would expect, the NDRC decided instead to make it into an entirely independent state-owned entity, an arrangement which gives China SatNet much more flexibility regarding who it sources the hardware from. And in the first bid China SatNet awarded for satellite manufacturing in October 2022, the winners were the Chinese Academy of Space Technology, CAST, which belongs to CASC, but also two other non-disclosed companies which could potentially be commercial players. So now that China seemed to have things figured out in terms of satellite hardware, comes the question of launch. In 2022, it was announced that China would employ the Long March 5B. The Long March 5B is China's heaviest launch vehicle to date, a sort of Chinese Atlas V, if you will, with a launch capacity of 25 tons into LEO. And while it's been used so far mostly to launch single large pieces of space hardware into orbit, like space station modules, it was declared that the rocket would be adapted using the Yuanjin upper stage to deploy clusters of satellites from constellations. And here comes the most interesting part. There's a very high possibility that the Guang satellite constellation will start to deploy this year. China's prime rocket manufacturer, the Chinese Academy of Launch Technology, declared in a post in January 2023 that the Long March 5B would launch at least once this year. The thing is, this rocket is known to launch only a very limited variety of payloads. There's space station modules, but that can't be it, as those have all been launched last year. It could be the Shenzhen Space Telescope, although most reports I've read seem to suggest a launch in 2024 rather than 2023. And it could also be another test flight for China's lunar crewed spacecraft, the NGCS, like the one performed back in 2020, although we know that the Long March 5 won't be the rocket used for China's crewed lunar missions. So really, the main giveaway that this could be the first launch of the Guowang constellation was that CALT also mentioned that all three types of Yuanzheng upper stages would launch this year. And this would include the Yuanzheng 2, which is used specifically for the Long March 5. So unless there's something that I've missed for 2023, it seems almost as certain that the Long March 5 be adapted with the Yuanzheng upper stage for the launch of clusters of satellites will take place this year. In the future, it's also possible that other rockets will be used for the deployment of China's super constellation. If we estimate Guowang satellites to be roughly in the range of Starlink satellites, so let's say 250 to 300 kilograms at an altitude of roughly 500 kilometers, this could mean more than 80 satellites sent into orbit at a single launch. And while this may seem like a lot, it also means more than 150 launches to complete the 12,000 plus satellite constellation. And so to reach a sufficient launch frequency, China could also look towards the Long March 7, the Long March 8, or possibly future Chinese reusable commercial launch vehicles, which are all now very close to launching their first prototypes. Another challenge for China's constellation once in operation will be managing so many satellites simultaneously. But for the curious space enthusiasts wanting to understand why a satellite remains in orbit and how this can be achieved, there's an essential tool which is the interactive online courses provided by today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant.org is the most effective yet low-pressure way to learn the science and engineering behind all of our discussions on space. 
Their courses range from the very basic to the most advanced. And one of the best things is that they have partnered with some of my favorite content creators like Real Engineering. For example, there's a series dedicated to orbital mechanics where you can learn why satellites remain in space, the concept of orbital velocity, and what the different methods are to launch payloads into space. Everything is done in an interactive way, which makes things much more enjoyable and easier to understand than watching regular lecture videos. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, you can go to brilliant.org slash dongfanghour or click on the link in the description below. And the first 200 listeners will get a 20% off the annual premium membership, unlocking all the problem solving courses and challenges. A big thanks to Brilliant for supporting the channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.